Murphy's Law and Whitetails, your guide to North America's number one big game animal. Today's topic is factors affecting a buck's antler size. And you might not be surprised when I tell you they are age, nutrition, and genetics, the big three as we call them. However, you might be surprised at the order in which I place them and also the complex interaction among these three variables that can greatly affect your deer herd. So let's start with age. By far, age is the most limiting and most important across the whitetail's range because no matter what you feed this animal and what its genetic potential is, if you harvest it at a young age, it's gonna have a small set of antlers. The good news here is that it doesn't take long to see a big change. By age three and a half, the average buck is expressing 75% of its eventual antler potential, and by four and a half, that's up to 90%. So you can see a big change very quickly. Nutrition, second most important, and also second easiest to control. Whitetail antlers are considered a secondary sexual characteristic, meaning simply that they are a reflection of excess in a deer's life. So to maximize antler size in whitetails, you have to not only meet nutritional demands, but to exceed them to see maximum antler size. Thankfully, there are a number of ways to control deer nutrition. The most common of these are managing native vegetation, perhaps planting food plots, or even supplemental feeding. However, one of the most overlooked and important ways to impact deer nutrition is by managing deer density, keeping the right number of deer for a given property. The next variable is genetics. Are genetics important in a deer herd? Of course they are. That's why we breed bird dogs and racehorses. However, in the wild, it's the least controllable and least important of the big three variables. So unless you're managing deer on an island or perhaps in a high fence enclosure, trying to manage genetics in a free ranging deer herd is gonna be a futile exercise. Multiple studies have looked at this and shown no impact whatsoever on the selective removal of certain bucks with so-called inferior antlers on that deer herd's overall genetic potential. What a lot of hunters don't understand is the complex interaction among these big three variables. We call this a multi-generational effect. And the way it works is that if you have a deer herd which has suffered chronic malnutrition for many years, the adult deer don't have the potential to achieve their full biological or genetic potential. Bucks can't grow as big antlers as they can even by shifting to a higher nutritional plane later in life. And the same with does. They can't produce the very best fawns possible unless they themselves were the product of good mothers who also had good nutrition. So in many cases, it takes a couple of years to see a big difference in terms of overall potential of a deer herd. The antlers from the bucks on the table here are great examples of this. Both of these are one and a half year old bucks taken from properties within 20 miles of each other here in North Georgia. Obviously, the one in my right hand is a fantastic one and a half year old buck. 10 points, scores over 105 Boone and Crockett. A fantastic animal. This, of course, is a spike. Deer density on this property was very low. Multi-generations of fantastic habitat, very good deer management, fantastic adult bucks. This property, very high deer density, very low body weights, very low productivity, and almost 100% of the year and a half old bucks on this property had spike antlers. Genetically, these herds are probably very similar, but this herd simply doesn't have the ability because of nutrition and deer density to achieve its full biological potential. So the take home message here is to focus on the factors you can control and those of which have been shown to make a big difference. Those are age and nutrition and simply don't fret over genetics. That's it for today's episode of Murphy's Law. I hope you learned something. Until next time, be sure to leave your questions and your comments here in the video, but also to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to check out all the great content at huntstand.com.